Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to talk about something really important today. Um, it was very important to me when we decided to move forward with getting an RV, motorhome, camper of any kind. Be sure that you like and subscribe to our channel, like this video. Hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Hopefully it gives you a little more information about safety in your uh, motorhome. So today I wanted to talk about one of those big problems that I see a lot of families having with deciding to get a motorhome. And I think a lot of people decide to go with the travel trailer route because they know that they can put their kids in safe seating if they just use their tow vehicle and then they pull their trailer behind. But for us, we, we were kind of more thinking along the lines of the motorhome. And so when we started going forward with this, we were thinking motorhome. And then I did a lot of research and I learned that motorhomes are really not made for safety. They, the regulations are limited to none. And that was something that bothered me about um, taking my family in, in a motorhome. And so we had some challenges that we have overcome, we think. And so I kind of wanted to take you through the process of what we did to uh, make sure that our kids can ride safely in our motorhome. I did a lot of research and learned a lot about um, safety and car seats and what is and is not appropriate for kids. First of all, disclaimer, I am not a car seat expert. I am not a traffic safety expert. I am not an expert in crash tests or anything of the sort. This is just what we decided to do, the balance that we tried to strike between um, safety and practicality and just the limitations of what you have when you're in a motorhome and some people may not know that this is a possibility some people may think that this is still not enough but for our family and for what we have learned and what we know so far we think we have done the best job that we can keeping our children safe given that we are in a motorhome and that in itself has its own limitations. So what I learned at the beginning when um, figuring out about motorhomes is that there really is no regulations that um, govern what can or cannot happen inside of a motorhome as far as seating goes. There are many people who feel free to walk about the, um, the coach. You know, some people need to, you gotta go to the bathroom. You, that's kind of why you got this thing, home on wheels. Um, but there are some people that don't realize that there are dangers when putting your kids in, um, in, in the motorhome. So for our family, I was not comfortable with um, our kids riding in anywhere that had a slide out because I felt like that was a more unstable section of the coach. I had watched a lot of videos and seen a lot of instances where in a bad accident, the slide can completely separate from the rest of the chassis and you have a giant hole in your motorhome and the slide is 50 feet away somewhere else in the grass. So I didn't feel comfortable having my kids ride in a slide. Also learned you cannot, as far as what I can tell, there is no place in a vehicle of any kind that is meant for a car seat except for a forward facing seat. So putting a kid in a side facing like dinette, those car seats are not meant to go there. And putting a child rear face in a rear facing seat, rear facing would make them forward facing. Anything, anyway, the only way that car seats are tested and protection is provided is when they are used properly as if they were in a regular car where they're, all the seats are forward facing. So we had to make sure that we had the availability of putting something or it already had forward-facing seats. So luckily, the um, the unit that we found had a dinette that had a rear-facing and a forward-facing bench seat. So that was, that was positive. Um, then we had to find a seat um, situation that, and I did a lot of research on this too, and I found it a couple of other families that had done the same thing. And a lot of them I see doing it in um, van remodels, but that's not so much in a motor home, but we found online just through um, like Facebook marketplace and these um, kind of separate unit of two chairs to combined 
that are from Ford Transit vans, like shuttle vans or um, large passenger vans, but these had been removed and so someone was, I don't know, getting rid of the, the car itself, the van, but saved the seats. So we found that and what's great about these seats is that they have integrated seat belts. So there's no seat belts that are like bolted to the floor or stuck to the, like the barely there plywood of the, um, of the walls of your coach. So everything for safety is in that, is in this one seat. So you have the, the three point harness, which you have to have, you cannot use you can, some car seats are available to use with the lap belt, but it has to be a lap belt that actually like locks. So in a, in a, you know, a sudden stop, there's a catching mechanism. Ours was just basically like a buckle that could slide in and out. It was not really doing anything. And the thing about it is that there, I don't think there's any rules about that. That's allowed. Like that's considered fine. There's no laws governing the safety and the seating arrangements in motorhomes because I think it's more considered a home than a vehicle so the, the rules are different. So we found these Ford Transit vans that had come out of a van. We got them for a really good price. I made sure that they had the seat belts, that they locked. They even have the latch system for um, the tethers for the top. They don't have latches for the um, in between the seats but you can still use the car seats with the seat belt. So everything we had worked that it still has the ratcheting locking mechanism within the um the part for the seat belt so i felt like those were pretty safe seats um so what we had done was we had the bottoms they're they're originally made with little hooks and they're supposed to hook into the base of the van um like they have a track in there and that's what they're supposed to do but we didn't have that track in our motorhome floor. So we have some friends who have worked on, or friends of friends, let's say, that, that are mechanics and that work on um, race cars. So they know kind of the upper level of what you need for ultimate safety in a vehicle that is put through its paces and that it goes through terrible crashes and like the level of, of welding and steel and, and things like that, bolts that we would need. So between our research and their expertise, I felt like we were gonna create something that was pretty pretty safe. Um, there's always a balance there, nothing is perfect, but um, so what they did was our friend, he, he took off the hook portion. He cut that off of the, of the base of these chairs and he welded steel plates to the bottom. So there are four legs at the bottom. He took those hooks off, he welded on steel plates, he drilled holes through them, and then he gave us four more steel plates for the underside that we're gonna sandwich, you know, between our floor of our of our coach. Now, um, those plates kind of serve as like washers and they're, they're big. I feel like with the surface area that that covers and with the I think they're called grade A bolts that we used. They're in there, like the seats aren't going anywhere. Now granted, they're, they're just attached to the coach. They're not attached to anything steel or like major framing, but none of this was beforehand. There was nothing here. It was like a, it was a bench seat. It was a plywood box with these kind of ornamental seat belts. So I feel like we're making a step forward. We were able to get seat car seats that actually fit. Um, we have two kids that are in two different phases of life and sizes. So we needed two different kinds. We needed a booster seat and we needed a full car seat. This is a very narrow car seat. I'll give you a close up of the car seats in a little bit. But these are the car seats that we found and they seem to work pretty well. We just did a test drive this morning, so we got everything fully installed yesterday after several weeks. So it took some time to get, we had to get the, the transit seat. We had to connect with a guy to help do the welding and like a metal smith, I guess that's what you call it. I don't know, he's a welder, but he works on cars. He does a lot of, um, a lot of intricate stuff with, with cars and with just art and, and welding. Um, had to connect with him, get him to understand what, what our needs were. Luckily, he was totally on board with as much safety as he could, could fathom. And um, connect with him, give him time to do his work, bring it home. We had to 
take out the bench seat and then we had to put in the the seats and that is not an easy task and luckily in our rig directly underneath this section of the kitchen the dinette is an open space it's just one of the bays underneath so we could get up under there and reach now we did run into our gray tank which which narrowed the space that we had to get up under there with our tools I say our my husband did the majority of the work but um <laughs> for him to get up there and, and work and see and he couldn't really see everything he was doing but between the two of us we were able to get the the seats into the floor really really tightly I feel like the seats are in well we have good safe uh, car seats and now we can all ride in this rig together pretty safely I feel like before I was riding with the kids in a separate car and I was following and now we can we can ride together and we can tow a smaller vehicle to have something to use when we get to our our location so it wasn't something that I thought was gonna be that big of a deal when we first decided to do this of course you know live and learn you learn as you go uh, but reading more about it I really did not feel safe first of all you're I have a baby like not even two and she needs a full car seat no matter what no matter where and then learning that you can't just throw a car seat in one of these because the seat belts aren't they're just kind of bolted to the floor um, and they don't lock that was the bigger thing and the whole thing that they're sitting on is just made out of plywood like that box could disintegrate underneath you in a bad enough crash so then they're not really strapped to anything so I feel like this is the best option is it perfect no because the 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 floor is not made of steel the you know that is the the weak link in this and I fully admit that but I feel like it's a huge improvement from where it was and you know getting in a car to go anywhere you always take somewhat of a risk so I think I'm hoping that we have kind of made that balance and improved things enough that that everybody is safe so the other added benefit of taking out that bench seat is that we gained a little bit of space. You can see that the footprint of these um, new transit seats is much smaller than the old bench. We did find some ugly flooring under there we'll have to address, but at least mechanically this is fixed. We will have to um, fix it a little more cosmetically. But the added benefit is that because that footprint is smaller, we actually have room for our daughter's pack and play to fit in this space for her to sleep at night. So that is much better than it was before. She was, we put the pack and play up on the platform that was meant to be for the cushions and for the bed for her to sleep on, which worked fine, but now it's a little more compact. We don't have to do that. So there's a little bit of rearranging. Once we get to our location and our campsite, we will have to remove the car seats so that they, the seat, seating area can be used with the kitchen table and we can all sit and eat but um, you know for the most part this will work there's just some finagling back and forth but we'll we'll manage with that so these are our car seats and it kind of came down a little bit to what they had in stock at the store we went to Target and Walmart and we struck out at Target but at Walmart we found this which is great this is um, gray co it's called snug and fit it is meant for narrow car seat situations where like you're trying to fit three in a row side by side so this works great it's super narrow it fits down in between we use the um we use the car seat to to go under the the seat and, and click it in and so that's how it's secure we also put the kind of the tether strap there because it was dangling and it's a little ad added security there's metal underneath the seats that that can go into and then this is just a high back booster our son is he's only five but he has exceeded the harness weight limit of almost every convertible car seat and high back booster we can find but he's only five, so I feel like he still has the bone structure and the, you know, the, the strength of a five-year-old. So I wanted him to still be in a high back booster for as long as possible. And this Britax Skyline 
actually goes up to 120 pounds. So um, this will give him a little more life than when what we currently had and what most of the other ones at the store I could find only went up to 100 pounds. Now that's with just the, the regular booster seat without the, the high back. But at least for now, for a few more pounds, <laughs> he's got... Um, He's got the high back booster, so I liked this because the, the weight limit was higher. Um, and it is a little tight, so, you know, her seat just fits, and his seat, we kind of have to push over so that we can reach the buckle for the, um, the seat belt. But, technically it works, so I feel like we have solved a major problem. There's the top of the plates that attach. Now the bolts are in different ways because of how hard it was to reach from different angles and the clearance of having to get those bolts to kind of make the curve up around the gray tank down below. So some of them had to be dropped in from above. Some of them had to be gone in from the top. This was our solution. Maybe it can be useful or helpful or help inform somebody else as to an option of how to make their motorhome a little more kid friendly. but. We haven't taken it out on the road completely, but we have done some around town test drives and the kids had no problems for a short distance. If anybody has any other car seat advice, I would be open to that, but just wanted to show you what we did here with our, with our rig. This is what it looks like. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you a little more insight into what some options might be for your family if you if you think you need something like this. But this was a big project that was majorly important to me and to our family. And so um, I hope it was helpful to you guys. And I will see you in another video really soon.